Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. Here we're discussing the topics that relate to the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the Brooklyn Appeal, and the upcoming Chicago trial. We're at day three before the Chicago trial. The docket movement on the Chicago trial has been very busy more from prosecution than from defense. Um, so I guess what they're doing is clarifying what motions have been filed on the docket as of recent by Jean for Robert, uh, Daryl McDavid, and June Brown. So there's a lot of incoming information. So prosecution can't really keep up with it. So they're requesting time. They're making mistakes and things have to be corrected and clarified. So the court is more or less, you know, Lion Weber is saying, get your things in order, um, correct and amend this. So tonight we're going to be talking about the corrected and amended report on ASA. And uh, let me see. Tonight we're going to be reporting on Asa Cruel, um, and I'm going to share some information on that filing. Uh, the prosecutor have asked for leave to file an instanter with the exhibit that will be submitted tonight. So join me for that discussion and get ready to give your opinion, your advice, and what you feel is going on there. Then in the Brooklyn Appeal Movement, August the 8th, Jennifer Bonjean requested a transcript for Robert Sylvester Kelly for proceedings held on October 2, 2019, December 19, December 18, 2019, February 6, 2020, 416, 2020, 423, 430, 2020, 8, 19, 20, 20, 9, 29, 20, 20, and 4, 15, 20, 21. These are the proceedings that went before Judge Ann Donnelly. Uh, Bonjean is saying that there is a response in opposition regarding 323 motion to writ letter, um, to writ. And so I guess these are now going to the appeal uh, information that more or less says that a lot of those sidebars on those days or whatever was taking place on those days were not being respectfully understood or heard. So they're in opposition of that. And it's regarding 323 motion for writ. And um, maybe we can find the writ. I will put it in the description box for 323 um but i do know that it's on the it's on the podcast somewhere down there in one of those of brooklyn so they're requesting that the court issue an order for the turnover of fundmate trust account for application to the defendant's outstanding criminal monetary penalties bonjean entered that on the 9th August 10th, 2022, there was a scheduling order that was put on the motion. The court has received the government's 323 motion and the defendant's 325 letter in opposition of that motion. The government is directed to file a reply by August 15, 2022, ordered by Jennifer Bonjean, um, ordered by, I'm sorry, Judge Ann Donnelly. And it was submitted on 8-10-2022. Now, I want to read a letter to you by Jennifer Bonjean that was on Twitter. A lot of things have been going on in Cook County, a historical moment where people who were uh, wrongly convicted, there were seven individuals wrongly convicted of murder due to police misconduct by disgraced detective Guevara. Two of these individuals 
were her client and their release. Welcome home, Nelson and Carlos. That's a great thing to hear. Um, there was something I wanted to share. Okay, Jennifer says, could the government be more unethical after seizing his funds and after sending this email in Eastern District of New York News decided to file a motion to confiscate his trust account money? You're supposed to do that before you take the money. <laughs> after this article was published, the Bureau of Prisons confiscated majority of Mr. Kelly's funds trust funds today with no notice to him and without any court order. As you know, the Eastern District of New York judgment is on appeal before the Second Circuit. Please advise whether you have any information regarding what authority exists that allows the Bureau of Prison to confiscate this money. Where did the money go? Was the receipt provided to the client? Please provide any information available at the taking of Mr. Kelly's funds without even a notice. Most importantly, I want to lodge a formal complaint against the Bureau of Prisons because I have learned that a Bureau of Prison correctional officer unlawfully assessed Mr. Kelly's trust account again and shared that information with this journalist. As you know, there is and was already an investigation into a BOP officer who unlawfully assessed private information from Mr. Kelly while he was housed at the MCC and shared that information with the YouTuber who published the information. This is a federal crime, as I'm sure you must recognize. This needs to be addressed. Please advise who is responsible for taking this complaint. A prompt response would be appreciated. So, and then she has this picture of Robert. These journalists will put this man's face on any article for clicks. And at Bureau of Prisons of Department of Justice, why are you continuing to allow these correctional officers to commit federal crimes assessing his private information? And this is from the Washington Post. U.S. prison officials resist making inmates pay court-ordered victims' fees. And that's what the clique is she's talking about. So there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of movement. Um, we're going to be on point tonight at 6. We'll be up to date. And there is, as of nine hours ago, that the New York Post, now I don't know how true this is because we understand that it's all for entertainment. The New York Post or put on its website that R. Kelly's longtime living girlfriend and now alleged fiance, Joycelyn Savage is set to release a tell all book about her relationship with the troubled R and B star. In an email to the Post, Savage twenty six confirmed the book will be called Love and Joy of Robert and should be published on Saturday. All I can say is that is about Robert, the beginning of my life in Robert's shadow, where things began to take off and where they and where they are currently going. She wrote about the book's content. Savage would neither confirm nor deny to the post that she and Kelly, whose full name is Robert Sylvester Kelly, are engaged. Everything will be answered in the book, she said. Savage did not reveal whether the book would be self-published or through an established publishing house or where the tomb will be available. So I just wanted to let you know that that is the newest thing that's going on. So we'll be there tonight. We'll be here tonight to get your uh, comments on that. But yeah, that's what's going on there. And there is also another thing I want to read tonight. We're going to be going over that response that is taking place with uh, the Asa Cruel and what happened with Jim Derek Goddess. So we'll be going over that tonight. And it's all very simple reads. It's not a lot of 
legalities in it. It's just what is going on in the motion and how prosecutorial um, side decided that they were going to explain their situation. But we'll also hear about how the how the prosecution is trying to share why certain things shouldn't be admitted into court. Why this with Jim Derogatis should not be admitted into court because they're not planning on calling him in to testify. But it doesn't matter. I mean, if the defense feels that it should be put in there, I mean, why should they re object that if they're not going to even use it? Why would they object to it? But it's probably because they would have to explain their side or have a rebuttal. And in doing so, they would have to then pull un the sealed documents out. So that's what's going on tonight. It's a big fight, man, and it's getting close. But I think I feel very, very confident that all will be well, even if, you know, Chicago goes on August 15th. Um, I'm super excited to see how this goes down. So see you tonight. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank all the R. Kelly Nation supporters and uh, viewers and listeners behind the scenes even to this podcast. You are welcome here. God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you tonight at 6 p.m. And as always, keep it 100.